Hello and welcome to the Varietal Show. If you've never been here before, you are on Varietal Literature's YouTube channel. My name is Rory <clears throat> and we are writers from Vancouver. And uh, Tuesday nights we do, um, you'll notice it's not Tuesday night, it's Thursday night, but Tuesday night we do folk tales and fairy tale readings. And if that's what you're here for, that's not what this stream is. But you might like this one anyways. This is a write-along stream. We call it lit games, literature games, but basically it's meant to either run in the background or if you want to participate more directly, join me in the live chat, giving your own recommendations. I may even ask for some prompts here and there. Um, and we're going to try out a solo tabletop RPG together and try to write a little story, usually, you know, pretty short, over the course of about an hour. And... Um, you know, if you're not watching it live, uh, down in the description below, there will be little timestamps you can click on. It'll jump you right ahead to wherever it is you want to go into the video if you just want to know the results or whatever else. And that is basically what the Varietal Show is. It's us writing together. It's a good background stream. It's a good participation stream. If you're into that kind of thing, if you're into writing. Which means... Um, <clears throat> I shouldn't waste too much time and I should get on to what the game is. So what we've been doing this month is um, a uh, playing a bunch of what are called solo tabletop RPGs for our segment that we call Lit Games. Now, Lit Games stands for Literature Games and it is where we basically write within the structure of a game or a pseudo game. Um, sometimes expressive games, lyric games, they're mostly prompts and they use like dice or decks of cards or something and a bit of a, a context, in this case being a hermit crab will be our theme. Um, and uh, you get prompts and you try to write stories around them. In our case, in the game tonight, it's going to use a tarot deck uh, for no particular reason related to tarot. So if that's something that isn't up your alley or whatever it doesn't matter it's just being used for prompts nothing about it being tarot matters um <clears throat> there is a variation that could be played with a normal deck of cards but i had a tarot deck so the game that we're actually playing is called everyone deserves shelter let me get that up for you there we go Everyone, oh man, those colors don't go with the scheme here. Um, everyone deserves shelter. And you can see there's a little naked hermit crab here. And uh, the premise of this solo tabletop RPG, which I got through the Solo But Not Alone bundle on itch.io, which I recommend, it's like 150 games for 10 bucks. 30% of which are just flat out weird, bad, nothing games. But a good 60% are engaging on some level. Um, and, and at least 10 of them are excellent. The, um, <clears throat> anyways, uh, we're going to embody a little hermit crab, the size of which and so on, we're going to figure out together. And that little hermit crab is going to go traveling and looking for new shells. Now I'm going to briefly describe this, but I'm going to tell you right now that your best move might be to click the pinned comment in the chat. There's a link there for a BBC video that shows you this happening. Now, obviously I'd show you it through the stream, but it's BBC. If I play that on my stream, I'm probably <laughs> gonna get taken down. So you will have to click that link if you don't know this phenomenon. But basically what happens is hermit crabs search for shells. If they find a shell that is too big for them, they stay by that shell regardless, waiting for another bigger hermit crab to come along. And they assemble in this little line where they transfer, the, the one that's outgrown its shell transfers its smaller shell to the smaller one. They align themselves by size. Now this description is terrible to listen to, um, but it is uh, why I've posted the video link. Um, the, um, um, but uh, they, tra they basically, they coordinate into a line from biggest to smallest, each giving their old shell to this next smallest one and taking the bigger shell from the person in line. Um, <clears throat> the, um, um, 
And uh, this game, Everyone Deserves Shelter, is about us being the first to find a shell and wait for it. And then we'll meet some NPCs and we write little journal entries about that. I've already done some work on creating the character. The prompts are based on the stuff we draw from tarot decks. The tarot deck, by the way, is the Lord of the Rings tarot deck, which is undeniably weird. Um, the man was a devout Catholic. Catholics don't tend to be fans of tarot decks, so it's super weird. Um, <clears throat> Holly's house is here, and Big Drew is here, and GS is here. Hello. Um, there's a pinned comment with the uh, video, if you guys are curious, if you haven't seen it. Um, and uh, Holly's house says, sounds like socialism to me. Well, you'd be surprised, wouldn't you? How much of the world of nature is socialist in nature anyways uh it will involve drawing tarot cards uh to get our prompts again it doesn't really have anything to do with tarot it's just using a tarot deck as prompts big drew says i had a hermit crab when i was little i feel like this is the start of a joke but maybe you're being serious like it feels like the the beginning of like a dad joke um <clears throat> Okay, so as per usual, as, as we went with last week, uh, I'm not really going to, um, <laughs> I'm not really going to bother you too much with the rules of the games. If there's one thing I've learned about my chat, it's that they don't care about the rules of the game. Instead, I'm just going to tell you that, suffice to say, we will draw some cards, it will give us some vague prompts, and from that we need to develop characters and interactions and write a journal entry from the perspective of a little crab looking for its shell. Uh, Holly Sosted says, did Suki draw the crab? No, this comes from the game. Um, you can see the, I'm looking through the document now. Uh, the game has lots and lots of very cute little hermit crab art. All of which are collected together, by the way, on the last page. Okay. So, we will have to come back to this document a few times. But we don't need to right now. So I want to introduce you to my crab. Um, I did some work on creating our crab character. We're welcome to make changes if, if chat really wants to. But I felt like if I left it up to chat, in my experience... Um, to create the character, we'd be sitting here for about 20 minutes and barely making a decision. So I made some decisions for you, Chad. Um, our name, uh, the name of our crab is, and, uh, GS nailed it, is Hermie, of course. Um, uh, it was originally Hermes, that's why this one is here. I guess I like the irony of that. Uh, because Hermes is fast and hermit crabs are not. <coughs> um... I also like the, the, the similar route to your hermetically sealed. Uh, okay, Hermes it, Hermie is awkward as his life is somewhat isolated because he's a, you know, he lives in a little shell like they often do. But he yearns for some connection. Uh, while he needs a new home, he is also excited about the opportunity to meet others when he's changing these shells. It's like his social event of the year. Um, his current shell, now, here, chat, A, B, or C, get ready to vote, because I'm leaving this up to you, and it will change a little bit about how we characterize him. His current shell is too small, it chafes against his growing body. So, A, B, or C, chat, is his current shell a film canister, if you don't even know what that is, because you're too young? <laughs> oh, God, I didn't even consider that. Um, <laughs> can't, I don't know, Google it. Um, B, a coconut shell, or C, a thimble. Obviously, these would change the size that Hermes currently is. <laughs> All right. Holly so said, I, I watched the video at two times speed. I didn't know about the lineup. I didn't know either. Honestly, I, I found, um, well, I knew about it, like, for the last few years. But when I first saw it, it was wild, like, just the spontane any act of spontaneous organization is, is wild. <clears throat> Big Drew is voting for film canister. That's 
seeing any other vote. So we'll say that our little grab is um, our little Hermie. is in a film canister. And uh, I agree um, with you there, Holly's House, uh, uh, in that I think that's a good a good thing to build onto the character, which is he is having anxiety about leaving his film canister, even if it is too small. I like that. Just in case anybody's wondering, I will favor cute and sentimental things for this because I feel like that's the tone of this game. Um, I mean, we just did like a David Lynch cowboy game last week. So if people want some edgy, there's your edgy. Okay, so journal entry one. And now I need to pull some prompts. So I'm going to read you just briefly. I know, I know, I know nobody, nobody absorbs this, but I have to try. Um, <clears throat> the game is played through the use of writing journal entries, uh, but you can also play with a game master, but we're not doing that. Um, these entries should tell the story of your hermit crab's journey to find a new shell and all the friends they made along the way. Altruism is at the heart of everyone deserves shelter. Um, and everyone has the right to be safe and to have shelter. As your hermit carob meets others along the way, consider how he can help them with their troubles, ensuring that they and you have the justice you deserve, which is everyone deserves shelter. Um, this system is based on tarot cards, the major arcana deck. If you don't know what that is, if you don't know tarot cards, that's fine. I'll handle that. Um, are used to create NPCs. Holly's house says Andrew is happy to be leaving his film canister this week. Well, I hope that uh, that is a meaningful statement and not nonsense. And on the off chance that it is, uh, congratulations, Big Drew, on whatever the hell that means. <laughs> Are you shedding a hose? Um... <laughs> Uh, each journal entry is a new day of your crab's travels. Your travels may take a long time in games, so to be sure to date eat e each entry. I don't know, we'll put today's date. I, I suspect we will barely get through more than two of these. Each entry, you need to draw an NPC from the Major Arcana deck, draw a theme from one of the minor, minor Arcana decks, um, which I'll, I'll deal with, uh, but they are related to the crab's emotional or mental state. Each day you come across a new person who is dealing with their own problems. You use the Major Arcana deck draws to determine that person. So a lot of this is us creating NPCs and their problems. Big Drew, uh, really, okay, so Big Drew clarifies it. Uh, says, yes, no more film canister for me. So I have no further questions. That. Uh, and then Holly's House has added in this really clears the clears the mud off the window congratulations on your baked beans can andrew okay finally someone has clarified okay big drew finally says i'm leaving a job that have been using and abusing me for over a decade yay to drew's job there you go we're not for kids people I bet they pretended they were shocked. Because the worst jobs are always like, why? Okay. I'm getting myself distracted. Let's figure out. So in other words, I'm going to draw a card. We're going to decide on what an NPC is. We're going to draw another card that gives us sort of the mood and mental state of our crab. And we're going to decide on a problem for that NPC. And then that will be what our journal entry is about. Is the problem and how our crab helped them. In this happy, silly little game, I have drawn a card from what's called the Major Arcana part of a tarot deck, and it is, again, a um, uh, a Lord of the Rings tarot card, which, again, is just an undeniably weird thing. Uh, but it is the Hanged Man, uh, which is 12 on the Major Arcana, um, and it is in this world of Lord of the Rings... 
This is going to be confusing if people came in part way. It is Faramir lowered onto the pyre. A man's life hangs in the balance. I'm going to show that art as best as I can. Uh, they're nice cards and all, but man, this is such a weird concept. Um, so, don't worry, we're not making Faramir. <laughs> now that I know what it is, which is it's number 12. Um, oh my god, I'm sorry. I keep bumping this thing because my nose is itchy. Uh, this is the Hanged Man, and the Hanged Man is here. The Rebel, the Free, the Sacrificer. Now, that means nothing, but thankfully this game knows uh, is a little bit better than the last one. Here's the important text. So, we're creating an NPC that our little hermit has encountered. Our NPC is going to fit one of the following three archetypes. Archetypes. Big Tree says, I'm not sure I'm nerdy enough for this game. Lord of the Rings has nothing to do with this. I'm just using a tarot deck that happens to be Lord of the Rings themed. Um, it uses a tarot deck. You could use any type. The um, Okay, so the rebel is extremely convicted. The rebel wants great change and are dedicated to their cause. They're ready to die for what they believe in. Our second option for an NPC character archetype is the free. The free have given away all their stresses and let go. They are released from all commitments and stay away from life's burdens. So it could be he meets a hermit crab that no longer uses a hermit crab shell. He just wanders around nude. Uh, a hippie hermit crab. Um, and then the final archetype that we can choose from here is the sacrificer. The fat sacrificer has given up something for the sake of a cause they believe in or they are about to... This that sentence ends. Um... <laughs> This sacrifice has caused conflicting feelings of great grief, but great pride. Okay. Big Drew says, NPC, I'm confused. NPC stands for non-player character. Um, it's basically when you meet someone in the world, they're side characters. So our we're playing the main character, what's usually called the PC, player character. And it's a little crab. And it's going to meet something in this world. Um, <clears throat> so, I'm going to say, because I'm sure people... I find that the first round, everyone's like, I don't get these games and I'm never going to. And then by the end, everyone's into it. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick the free, because it's the only one I have an idea for. <clears throat> and it's going to be... He meets... Hermie meets a shellless hermit crab. Uh, Big Drew says, Oh, I know what NPCs are. I misheard you. My apologies, carry on. No need to apologize. A lot of this stream is me explaining things too quickly. Um, okay, so now comes the mo. Again, these games have such abstraction to them, but um, now comes the part of the game that is confusing. And I'm going to put this up there and you can engage with it, chat, but I'll just kind of do it for you until anybody decides that they want to engage with this aspect of it. We can pick from a random pile of stuff based on what we think our emotional state is, but people already said that um, our, our critter is a little bit anxious, so I think that means it's going to be from the cups pile. So I'm going to shuffle the cups pile a bit, draw a card, and that will get us the other half of our prompt. Which is the Two of Cups, which is Faramir. It's Faramir again. Embraces Eowyn as they fall in love. But in this game, it has nothing to do with Lord of the Rings. It is Two of Cups. This is Two. Unity, Partnership, and Connection. Is there anything more I need to know? I think that's it. Yeah. 
Okay, so... <clears throat> Now we have a prompt. Our little hermit crab, on its first day of trying to find a new um, shell, has, I'm gonna put this over here, um, <clears throat> met a hermit crab who is shellless little hippie. He's free. That's his archetype. Um, Big Drew says Hermit is timid, meek, and frightened, which means he's lovable. We're rooting for him, and he's primed for a big adventure. I agree. And so I think I think it's cool for him to meet somebody who's kind of devil may care. <clears throat> so I, it's a journal entry, so it's all in first person. So I'm going to open it with, I met the strangest fellow crab today. He was wandering in the tall grasses at the edges of the beach. But he had no shell. I was shocked. How could a hermit crab risk wandering without his shell? Yeah, we need the free crab's name. That's right, GS. I said... Hello, mister. Are you in trouble? Did one of the big mean seagulls watch this turn into like Animal Farm? <laughs> My own version of Animal Farm, <laughs> but about landlords. My Maoist Animal Farm. <laughs> Seagulls. Uh, the capitalist landlords. Uh, GS says Maynard G. Krebs. I was thinking like hippie-ish. I do like Maynard J. G. Krebs, but it kind of makes me think of maybe somebody a little more formal we can use later. Are you in trouble? Did you... Uh, did one of the big mean seagulls steal your home right off your back no man I just really like Holly's house says Garth okay let's go with Garth no man I just really like those easterly Winds running over my back, unabated. By any silly structures. Said the crab squinting and smiling oh dear oh dear it's Winnie the Pooh now uh, Maynard was a beatnik is Maynard somebody because Maynard, I don't know why, it just, it reads English to me, like a high English society. 
Big Drew says, Slick was naked when I came upon him. <laughs> my mouth fell agape at his devil-may-care attitude. What about the birds? Wasn't he scared? <clears throat> From the 1962 Dobie Gillis TV series. I don't... This might come as a shock. <laughs> but I don't know what the heck that is. <laughs> um oh dear oh dear uh i muttered the mere thought of just leaving my little gray film canister was enough To squeeze my little heart and shorten my breaths I couldn't even fathom going shellless and yet he was so relaxed Ah, uh, perfect, Big Drew. I'm taking that line. Big Drew says, shells belong to the man, man. I'm not a part of the system. Relax, little one. He said and extended his, the red, right? His red claw? His red claw. For a sheik. For a bump. My name is Garth. GS says, and every time someone mentioned work to Maynard, he would squawk, work! Because he was allergic to work. Who, who is Dobie Gillis? Like, I... I definitely watched a lot of 60s television because they did a bunch of reruns in the 90s. We didn't really have a lot of our own shows. We had Friends, which just isn't as good as people think it is. <laughs> and uh, well, that's not true. It just it just doesn't resonate with me. Um, and uh, the later half, we had that 70s show. I mean, we had Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, but it wasn't enough to fill a lot of television. Uh, my name is Garth, man. What's your... Uh, what's the most pretentious way to say this? Uh, what's your sign? Uh, to mankind. After a few exchanges, I realized he was asking. Uh, Maynard was played by the same actor who played Gilligan. Well, that certainly makes sense. Gilligan certainly acted somewhat that way. I realized he was asking mine for my name. And I said, my name is Hermie and I am delighted to meet you but I cannot focus on anything but the danger you must be in are you really fine without a shell I instinctively tucked back into my little film canister
We'll put Big Drew's line in now. Shells belong to the man, man. I'm not part of that system. He gave three high pitched he's. as a laugh then continued I suppose I have one problem though the sun's been doing a bit of a number On the old exo skeleton. Can you think of a way to keep my back cool? Keep the sun off it, but not interfere with that sweet easterly breeze. <clears throat> Big Drew says, Garth Slick Krebs chortled to himself before continuing, I don't know about you, but I'm going to go visit that ficus tree so I can soar with the birds, man. You coming, shortstop? Oh, shortstop. That's, um, oh, what is it? That's the second Indiana Jones. Doesn't he call, uh, the, the random sidekick Asian kid shortstop? Or am I misremembering? Welcome to Millennial Hour. <laughs> Where we alienate Gen Z. Oh, Gen Z's gotta know. Indiana Jones. But I, I don't think that second Indiana Jones has survived as well. Oh, good point, GS. GS says, and doesn't involve work. Oh, Holly's House says, short round. In all caps, like, how dare I forget the worst Indiana Jones movie? Now, I've put that out in the world because I know, and I let a pause pass there because I know somebody just started typing, what about Kingdom of the Crystal Skull? And I gotta be honest, I'm kind of on the fence. I have nostalgia and I like how the second Indiana Jones movie looked better than the newer one. And the fact that it doesn't have Shia LaBeouf or Boof or whatever it is, helps. Um... I don't know. I think they're A, both better movies than most people give them credit for. But um, I don't know that it's so obviously better. It's a really strange movie. Like, I don't know when the last time you guys watched the second Indiana Jones was, but it is bizarre. Uh, GS says, I love the second Indiana. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's it's. It's different. I'll give it that. Okay. Immediately. I wanted to help. I'd been alone for so long. I'll admit. Because I sometimes hid in my home. For too many days <clears throat> that I wanted 
to find... I wanted... to have a good interaction with a decent fellow crab. But what could I do? I started to suggest building a little porch for him to rest under. Holly's house says it's only capitalized and how dare you because K Hui Hui Quan has been everywhere for months and winning everything for everything everywhere all at once. Everyone keeps telling me to watch it. I will. I haven't. Uh, GS says Rory doesn't follow entertainment news. Hey, now, that may be accurate, but let's not let the YouTubes know that. Because I'm supposed to be down with the kids. <laughs> I assure you, children, I understand your culture. It is popular and therefore known to me. Uh, yeah, it took me about five years to turn into an old man who doesn't understand things. <laughs> now, Holly's house says Rory is a movie guy. I don't believe your nonsense, GS. Hey, hey, no, don't fight. Um, so yes, you should know. Um, you know, recently I've been doing writing, uh, and, uh, in between that I've been playing games. So, uh, I haven't been keeping up with movies. Holly's house, you haven't seen it. Unsubscribed. Uh, you know, there's lots of things I haven't seen. I won't go to the theaters still, because I don't still don't believe that we have enough uh, control over the obvious problem with going to the theater for me to want to risk it. So I just wait for things to come to streaming. I started to suggest building a little porch for him to rest under, but he said, Nah, man. I don't want to build nothing. I ain't here to like impose my vision on the world with labor. I just want to do something about the sun. Big Drew and GS come into my defense that they have not seen it either. It looks cool. Um, I do like the actors in it. But I mean, I'm a big Marvel fan and I haven't seen like Ant-Man. Um, and normally I would have gone and seen that in theaters. So it's not a testament to any sort of judge of its quality. I just don't go and see these things. I just want to do something about the sun on my back. I just thought of a way to do this that would have been interesting, but in order for me to make it work now, I would have to go back and rewrite whole sections of it, so I can't do it. But, um, that is a shame. Oh my god, I have wasted a lot of time. It's a very lazy one. Is anyone even watching anymore? <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, something about the sun on his back. I'm trying to think of, like, a clever turn here. Uh, Big Drew says, Rory, I've been to concerts 20,000 plus people. Nothing happened. I've had a Rona twice. It's absolutely meh to me. I know too much to trust that. <clears throat> My background was in industrial hygiene and uh, um, I read things that average people have not read. And unfortunately, you cannot unlearn those things. Um, Holly's house, everything everywhere all at once is still <laughs> talking about it. Um, okay, I'm going back to the story. I'm not gonna talk about movies anymore. 
The, um, uh, do something about the sun on my back. Uh... I tried to find a few ideas that might work, but he said after some time, that's all right, Hermy, little man. Good luck in finding your shell. I'll just keep on keeping on. We parted ways, but then up the beach, I ran across a terrible scene. <laughs> Big Drew making a reference to one of my favorite Simpsons lines. Okay, fine, I'll watch the movie, but I'm not wearing pants. Um, GS says polarized lens, lens, one lens lying on the beach. Oh, that's a good idea. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna try something here because our card, one of our cards was about unity. Uh, we parted ways, but then up the beach, I ran across a terrible scene. A few butterflies. We're tending to a newly born pupa. A newly born of their kind. Its wings were still wet and they were all worried. that it could not fly. I stopped and asked, what can I do to help? <laughs> Holy and Big Drew are fake fighting. Um, hey man, art is subjective. People get different things out of different things. The, uh, I stopped and asked, what can I do to help? They explained that the butterfly could not go into the sun to dry its wings or the galls might grab it. Oh! I said. What if you could fake flying while they dried? They were confused 
but I scuttled back the way I came and caught Garth. Having a sweaty nap. Of course, I brought Garth to the feeble new butterfly. and proposed my solution to their problems. Little butterfly, I said to the damp winged insect, it interrupted and said, you can call me Mandy. My apologies, I added. Mandy. You will ride on the sun-torched back of Garth, the shell, and shield him from the heat. Garth, you'll keep an eye out and for the gulls, tuck away in the long grass before they can get him. All present, such a kid's book line. All presents agreed, this would be best. Garth and Mandy, with Mandy upon his head. Do they have heads? Not really. When walking and both were happier for it. Jess says a little hermit butterfly commune. Exactly. <clears throat> Alas, it was too much socializing for me. So I've tucked into my tight little canister for one more night. I bet tomorrow I'll find my shell, though. Night-night, journal. <laughs> Big Drew says, Rory, this might be the softest thing you've written. That's good. That's my point. I, I, I like to do range. I like to engage with ranges of things. Um, that's one of the opportunities of this game. Which, uh, by the way, before I go and read this back, um, <clears throat> for the crowd that comes later, uh, chat, here's what I want you to consider. I have a game uh, that's post-apocalyptic, and I have a game that is... Um, um, oh. Post-apocalyptic or... Horror? 
uh, themed around the Wendigo, if you know what that is. Post-apocalyptic one, I, there's actually a couple that are post-apocalyptic, but the one I'm thinking of, if I can make it work, involves a Jenga tower every time we take damage, and eventually it collapses and I die, and you sort of like do that to see what's happening and then write the journal entry. Um, uh, you tell me which one you're interested in doing next week, whether it's the post-apocalyptic Jenga Tower one uh, about journals from the barren wastelands or the, um, the horror one about wandering through a forest and realize you're being stalked by a monster. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, let me know which one interests you and I'm going to read this back. We really got off track today is what happened. That's on me, by the way. All right. If you're coming to this part of the stream and you did not watch the rest, that just means you want to hear the results. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, we did a game called Everyone Deserves Shelter, which is a story, a game about playing a little crab, hermit crab looking for its shell and uh, looking for a new shell. Um, in, in the structure of the game, it meets random NPCs, uh, they have a problem, it resolves the problem, and then it writes little journal entries at the end of the day, and the journal entries are the main activity. Uh, the prompts are used, are found using tarot cards. Um, I won't really go into that, I will tell you the prompt we got, but I'm just going to read you the journal entry we got. Um, our crab, though, was named Hermie. Its personality was Hermie is awkward. Uh, as his life is somewhat isolated in the little hermit crab, uh, we decided his shell was a film canister. But he yearns for some connection. Well, he needs a new home or a new shell. He is also excited to meet others because hermit crabs tend to meet in groups when they have to change shells. Uh, our prompt uh, gave us the free... Uh, as an archetype for our NPC, the free have given away all their stresses and let go. They are released from all commitments and stay away from life's burdens. And for that, we created a little hermit crab <clears throat> for our little hermit crab to meet. And the theme in this problem was unity, partnership, and connection. Journal entry one from Hermie the Crab. I met the strangest fellow crab today. He was wandering in the tall grasses at the edges of the beach sand, but he had no shell. I was shocked. How could a hermit crab risk wandering without his shell? I said, hello, mister. Are you in trouble? Did one of the big mean seagulls steal your home right off your back? No, man. I just really like those easterly winds running over my back. Unabated by any silly structures, said the crab, squinting and smiling. Oh dear, oh dear, I muttered the mere thought of just living, leaving my little grey film canister was enough to squeeze my little heart and shorten my breaths. I couldn't even fathom going shellless, um, and yet he was so relaxed about it. Relax, little one, he said and extended his red claw for a bump of mine. My name's Garth, man. What's your sign to mankind? After a few exchanges, I realized what he was asking was my, for my name, and I said, My name is Her Hermie, and I am delighted to meet you, but I, I cannot focus on anything but the danger you must be in. Are you really fine without a shell? I instinctively tucked back into my little film canister. Shells belong to the man, man. I'm not a part of that system. He gave three high-pitched hee 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 sounds as a laugh, then continued. I suppose I have one problem, though. The sun's been doing a bit of a number on the old exoskeleton. Can you think of a way to keep my back cool? Keep the sun off it, but not interfere with that sweet easterly breeze? I immediately wanted to help. I'd been alone for so long, I'll admit because I sometimes hid in my home for too many days. But nonetheless, I wanted to have a good interaction with a decent fellow crab. But what could I do? I started to suggest building a little porch for him to rest under, but he said, Nah, man, I don't want to build nothing. I ain't here to, like, impose my vision on the world with labor. I just want to do something about the sun on my back. 
I tried to find a few ideas that might work, but he said after some time, that's all right, Hermy little man. Good luck in finding your shell. I'll just keep on keeping on. We parted ways, but then up the beach I ran across a terrible scene. A few butterflies were tending to a newly born of their kind. Its wings were still wet, and they were all worried that it could not fly. I stopped and asked, What can I do to help? They explained that the butterfly could not go into the sun to dry its wings, or the gulls might grab it. Oh, I said, what if you could fake flying while they dried? They were confused, but I scuttled away <clears throat> until I scuttled back, back the way I came, oh, and caught Garth having a sweaty nap. Of course, I brought Garth to the feeble new butterfly and proposed my solution to their problems. Little butterfly, said the damp winged insect, it interrupted and said, you can call me Mandy. It's a terrible voice. My apologies, I added. Mandy, you will ride on the sun-torched back of Garth and shield him from the heat. Garth, you'll keep an eye out for the gulls and tuck away in the long grasses before they can get him. All present agreed this would be best. Garth, with Mandy upon his head, went walking and both were happier for it. Alas, it was too much socializing for me. So I've tucked into my tight little canister for one more night. I bet tomorrow I'll find my shell, though. Night, night, journal. There we go. The softest thing we've ever written, <laughs> in the words of uh, Drew. Ugh. Well, uh, I'm happy with that. I mean, the point is to waste some time joyfully, and I enjoyed wasting that time. Um. Yeah, let me know what guy you guys are interested in. If you want a horror game or a post-apocalyptic game next time. Or if you want to wild card it and leave it up to me. I can do whatever. Um, <clears throat> the um, uh, If it interests you at all, I should tell you that uh, Tuesday we did a... It was... <laughs> Tuesday's story was a really good story on Fireside Fairy Tales. But it's one of those things that's hard to... Um, it's hard to cram into social media in a way that it portrays what's interesting about it. Um, it's about a princess who has to go to the heart of the earth, which is an actual beating heart, um, to retrieve flowers to help her father. Uh, it involves her being chucked into a sea of fire, um, meeting a blue man that steps out of nowhere. Uh, anyways... I, I think it's a really lovely video. It's a, a, a story. It's a Norwegian folktale. I recommend it. It's on the channel right now. It's called The Princess Who Went to the Heart of the Earth. I think that's the name of the video as well. And as far as um, anything else goes, well, thank you so much for Holly's house for coming by. Holly had to step out. I see you there. I uh, had to go get a pancake stack of kids tonight. Um... Uh, Big Drew says, cute story tonight. Don't worry, Big Drew. Uh, we'll go back to more of your style next week, I'm sure. Uh, uh, the um, GS says, good story, great background. Like this background or, or something about the background of the story? Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out with me and keeping me company. Um, I mean, you really don't have to go home. This beach is for everybody, but you know. Get out of my son. <laughs>